live from Washington, D.C., it's theCUBE. Covering Inforum DC 2018. Brought to you by Infor. Oh, welcome back here on theCUBE. Along with Dave Vellante, I'm John Walls as we wrap up our coverage here at Inforum 18, Washington, D.C., nation's capital. Again, just sandwiched we are between Capitol Hill and the White House here. And just on top of the show floor, Dave had a chance to check out the, uh, the goings on down. So good feeling here, good vibe on the floor, good feeling on the keynote stage. I know tomorrow, a good lineup as well. But just your thoughts as we uh, wind up here on day one. Well, I think J Charles Phillips is an awesome host. I mean, first of all, he looks great up there. He's, he's, he's tall, he's thin, he's got his awesome suit on. I mean, the guy is just dressed impeccably. Add to that his, his mind. I mean, he's a very clear thinker, a clear strategist. He's able to articulate the value, the strategy that, that Infor has and has had for quite some time and the value that it brings to customers. So I, I really like listening to him. He's not a hype machine, unlike you know, so many in this industry who are incredibly successful, Larry Ellison, Mark Benioff, you know, others, you know, love to hype what they do. Charles throws a little, few little jokes in there, but very low key, as, as we heard this morning. Um, and it seems to be working. I mean, as a private company, they can write their own narrative, right? If this were a public company, people would be hammering them to debt, they'd be you know, knocking them on the top line growth, because the income statement, you know, from a growth standpoint, is not exploding, but the, but the SaaS pieces of the business are. So, but, you know, Wall Street, they would be picking at that scab. So as a private company, they're not subject to the 90 day shot clock. Uh, and so as a result, they can write their own narrative, which I think is incredibly important for this company right now because they have a large install base of customers that they're trying to move to their new platform. Move, migrate, you know, those are scary words for customers. And so the, the competition, this is why, why is Oracle coming at in, in, Infor so much? Two reasons, there's maybe others, but number one, Infor's hurting Oracle. They're taking share away, and Oracle you know, thinks it should have 100% market share. Um, same with SAP. The second is that it sees an opportunity to fight back. You know, the best, best uh, 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 defense is a good offense. And so they're trying to go after those customers that Infor's trying to woo to their new platform. And, and anytime you're moving, it's an opportunity. Mm -hmm. right? We saw this with big acquisitions like Dell and EMC, kind of EMC took, took the eye off the ball. Others came in, it allowed you know, a company like NetApp to come back. So you see that, you know, certainly HP, when it was splitting up, got distracted. So you see that, and, and so now, what's key about uh, in, in sessions like this, events like this, is it allows Infor to stay relevant, to put a relevance story in front of its customers. So what is that story? It's got a platform, it's got a full stack, it's investing in R&D, uh, it's, it's innovating with technologies like AI, it's building um, organic innovation and it's bringing in inorganic uh, through acquisition, things like Burst for, for modern BI and injecting that throughout its application portfolio. It's got a full suite. It was interesting, somebody said we had to make a bet. Do we go full suite? Or, or best or of breed. Or do we go best of breed? Right. I would argue by going micro vertical, they can claim both. It's very hard to be both best of breed and both, both full suite. I mean, I would agree. If you just want to do one thing, you're probably going to do that one thing better than anybody else. Um, and, and so I'll grant you that. But I think the, the balancing act is how do you stay like best of breed or near best of breed with that full suite? And I think Infor's found the answer with micro verticals. Um, and bringing in technologies like AI, I was very impressed with all the the robotic process automation talk this morning, that's going to be a huge business. It's already, I mean, it's growing like crazy. So if I'm an Infor customer and I'm an old, you know, law, legacy Lawson customer, I'm thinking, wow, these guys are really making some interesting investments. Yeah, I got to spend and I got to maybe migrate, but if I don't, I'm going to get, you know, digitally transformed by somebody else. Mm -hmm. right? And they didn't actually put a lot of scare tactics in there, but maybe that's something they should, you know, might, might, might want to add in is some examples of customers that are, you know, been left behind. Mm -hmm. uh, but maybe that's bromide in, in, in the industry today. But I think that, that that relevance message came through loud and strong, and I think it's critical for this company. Yeah, I think it was interesting just to uh, start with the keynotes, and uh, we heard it throughout 
the uh, various guests that we had here on the program today was that uh, it's a company that really knows who it is. At least that's the feeling I get. Yeah. Knows where it's going. So it inspires a lot of confidence, right? He does. Charles does. The company does. And, and they're just kind of, they're just real comfortable in their own skin for one. And two, they're committed to other principles outside of business and talk about the diversity and inclusion. That's just not flap. That's really who they are. That's their DNA. I think there's an appealing aspect there too. Yeah. And so, and then we heard a lot about the, you know, the Coke industry's investment, two and a half billion. I said two billion earlier. It was two and a half billion. That, that, that money didn't show up in the balance sheet. Okay. So, you know, again, you get to write your own narrative as a, as a private company. So there's still 338 uh, uh, million uh, on the balance sheet, you know, still quite a bit of debt. So again, Wall Street would be picking at that. It doesn't even come up at this event. You know, customers aren't really asking those questions. They want to see uh, a, a company that's viable. This company's clearly viable. They're throwing off a lot of cash. That's why private equity and, 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 and organizations like Coke Industries are interested in them because the, it's, it's cash flow positive. They see a lot of you know, financial upside for this company. So that's kind of cool. The other thing is Hook and Loop, the design firm that in, Infor bought you know, several years ago. We heard how that's evolving and becoming a fundamental part of not just uh, design, but product development. I think that's, that's pretty impressive. Many companies are, are doing that now. These guys got in first, and so they're a little bit ahead of the game. I think they're, 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 in, they're innovating in a way that um, I think has ripple effects for customers. I mean, the customer experience. Um, you hear a lot about diversity at this company. I mean, this is, this is not, to me, lip service. Right. You know, Charles is really serious about this stuff. And he's got the platform to do it, and he's investing in it. Um, and so, you know, you, you see a lot of substantive examples, and I think that will pay off. It'll pay dividends. Um, the four horsemen um, now have been sort of evolving. There's a succession planning with the four horsemen, right? Because uh, Stefan and Duncan have have, have moved on, you know, they've, they've left the company or at least they're not front and center anymore. The LinkedIn still says they're within four, so they're some, somehow affiliated, but they don't have operating roles, it's clear. Uh, but Charles and Pam still do, and so you're seeing an evolution there. We're going to ask uh, the head of HR tomorrow about that. Um, we heard from, you know, Martine, back to the, to the diversity. Uh, 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 Corey uh, Tollefson talking retail. Um, you know, again, micro industry, you know, we know I mean, he didn't mention it, but you know, guys like Macy's, Safeway, these are, these are decent sized customers of, of Infor. Um, we're seeing the partner ecosystem grow. We had Capgemini on today, um, Grant Thornton's out there, you know, Deloitte and others. So okay, that's- Accenture's out here, I think. Accenture's yeah, out yeah, here, yeah. yeah. So that's, that's important. Um, again, I think, I think Coke Industries helped nudge some people in there. Like, hey, we just made a big investment. We're a big client of yours. Didn't hurt. You're, you're going to pay <laughs> attention and find some opportunities. It probably said, look, it's got to be substantive, got to be a win-win, but we want you to look in earnest. And I think others have. I've heard that there's been multi-million dollar deals that these guys have, have catalyzed. Um, Kevin Curry from, from public sector, a uh, critical space for Infor. He has almost 1,000 customers here, and Amazon has a huge presence mm -hmm. in, in public sector and they're drafting off of that. And then of course we, we ended with Raul from uh, AWS, which was fun interview. AWS is obviously winning um, in so many different fronts. Big partnerships with guys like VMware, obviously number one in cloud. I mean, others I guess if you add up all the revenue are you know, number one, but really Amazon's number one in cloud. I mean, right. We know their tops because they're in the, for their serve market, which is infrastructure as a service, they're by far the leader and they started the whole thing. Uh, tomorrow we got Charles Phillips coming on, we got yep. Pam, Pam Murphy, uh, the two what I consider founders of Infor, there weren't, it, but, but they were the founders of the new, co-founders of the new Infor, if you will. Um, and some customers coming on. So we're really excited to, to be here. And Big day, uh, looking forward it. to it. And, yeah. uh, and, and we, unfortunately, can't share this with you at home, but um, uh, Venus Williams on the keynote stage tomorrow. Looking forward to that. Talking about a human potential. Shaq was going to be here, had a last minute cancellation, so they've put Venus Williams in and talk about uh, really thematically very consistent uh, her life story with what Infor is talking about here this week. And we're glad to uh, have the opportunity to be here with you throughout the, uh, the week at their show. So that's it for day one here at uh, Inform 18. For Dave Vellante, I'm 
John Walls. Thanks for joining us here on theCUBE, and we'll see you back here tomorrow from Washington, D.C.